the flow that you're seeing here now. And then when I think about the component parts that kind of support it, that, the, that are now part of it, you can see it's not really thinking in the sense of individual applications. It is thinking as a solution and the parts of that solution of how they all interact, taking advantage of that common data service through to the apps, through to the Power BI, and so on. Well, as a user, I start to see it in this sort of vein. So this is my kind of my initial sort of landing page that I have. Um, and those of you using Office 365 will recognize the left-hand side of my screen. So on the left-hand side there, you can just about see the various um, apps that I have within Office 365. And finance and operations is one of them. Um, Lifecycle services will be in there as well. But I basically can click on and go through to the customer success, um, sales, customer service. Those are all my, all my individual apps that I have access to. If I wanted to sign a focus in on um, operations, as it is today, this is what a normal user would see. This is the, kind of the, in the initial default dashboard. And from this dashboard perspective, we can see here that you know, the little circular areas, if I draw your eyes to the bank management on the top left-hand corner next to the calendar, that is a, what we refer to as a workspace which really is the involvement of what was once the role centers that we had, but in a slightly different manner and a slightly different range of focus of, of role. In terms of the UI experience here, though this is now designed to not just be keyboard entry and mouse entry, but it's all touch orientated as well. Um, words like HTML5, so if you're into development, you know that, what that language word will mean as in terms of environment. You, this is all based on HTML5 as the UI front-end design. So we can scale up and down inside our browser. It is purely browser-based, by the way. There's not a thick client approach to this anymore, which is what we've had with the r and earlier. So we can search around. And if I was to then click into one of these workspaces, this is, this is the approach that we now see. And it's always predominantly structured so that on the left hand side we have those um, KPI boxes. Um, those are kind of quick click throughs to those particular areas and those particular lists. But you can see immediately there's a quick snapshot in terms of the summary form of you know, um, open cases etc. And then visually you can see the balances there. In the towards the top left hand corner this is, this is my, my workspace. But there's also an analytical view to this as well because we can be already always thinking about how we would work with the likes of Power BI. And Power BI, we can work in a number of different ways, but this is the, the analytical workspace that now exists within operations. So this is from the Power BI side of the coin, taking the information, presenting it to individuals, that, that, and information that is pertinent to that workspace and that person's role. Role security, etc., of course, is still very, very pertinent to all of this behind the scenes. But when I'm thinking about how I'm looking at data, you know, it might not be appropriate to kind of keep looking at data from within, you know, the, um, the, fina the finance and operations, uh, user experience, and the workspaces. Why go there when you spend your life in perhaps the, um, the BI environment? business intelligence environments. And so Power BI, and you'll hear more about this as we go um, today, gives you the scope to kind of just look directly at your data. And I'm sure Ken will be kind of dazzling us appropriately in a moment on that side. But I mustn't forget the power of the Excel. And we've kind of reinvented and reworked a lot of how the data is integrated with Excel so that we can kind of take full advantage of that particular platform. And of course, once you've got your data in, you can pivot off and you can restructure. And I'm sure you've done these sort of things before yourselves. But it gives you that sort of scope to kind of take full advantage of um, data from a within the user experience, taking full advantage of the, the charting capability that exists there today with the Power BI or the, uh, or the analytics workspaces. But you've also got, mustn't forget, Excel, how we could be interacting with Excel as well. But there's also, you know, personalizing and in trying to be as productive as possible within our user experience. And this perhaps goes a little bit overboard a little bit, but as an example, but 
what I want to just draw your attention to is you can see, say, on this vendor payments item here, we've got vendor pay run, not posted, quantity of six. Well, really, that's a shortcut through that I can click on now, rather than perhaps having to go onto vendor payments, locate, and then click through. So it kind of just helps speed me up. So this is my default dashboard, and you can see here all the items that might be pertinent to me. I've put these little shortcuts in here. So under, towards the middle here on the right, sales order processing and inquiry, we've got unconfirmed delayed order lines, partially shipped. I can click through each of those to that information. So it just kind of speeds us up. Subtle, a little bit of personalization, but it kind of enables us to take us to that next tier. We've also kind of taken areas like the task recorder, uh, which is still, still there and pertinent, but we've now got something called task guides that takes it to that next level. And this is here on the right-hand side, uh, a task guide that's being created that's highlighting us to say, create sales order invoices. And you can just about see that um, black and gray box by its side. Against the point here, you can see, go to accounts, there's a little blue dot against 1.1. And that's the position I am on that particular task guide as a user. The power of this is when you think about new employees joining your organization. They've joined your organization, you've invested in them, you've taken them through training, and then we all know that day will arrive and they've got to do it themselves. Did they pay attention to all of that training? Hands up that sp spent every minute of their course paying full attention. We all drift off, don't we? I do. Should I admit that on camera? I don't know. But it is a case that we lose track. And when that, that, when that moment comes and we've got to do that task for that very first time, it's a little bit daunting, even if you've got the manual and the paperwork. But if you can put in, how do I create a sales order? Into the search bar at the top right. It'll pop up this uh, window and it will guide you through the steps. So I'm at 1.1 and from here, I can click again, and it, from, I've clicked on go to accounts, orders receivable, shipped, takes me into that part of the UI, the box moves with me, and will continue through each of the individual steps appropriately, guiding me through the particular task, helping that new employee understand that, that task that they learned two weeks ago, three weeks ago, for the very first time. Are, is there anybody here from a retail perspective? I know I was talking to somebody from Incremental about a retail customer. I'm not sure if they were here. But I did just pop up um, the UI that is here for the tills as well, just to give you a sense that is um, from, the, from, from that perspective of the, the, the Cloud Pods side. Now, from here, you know, this is, you can see the nice, great big boxes, as you could <coughs> imagine, from a till perspective. These are basically touchscreen orientated controls. So it's intended to be as visual and as you know, in your face about how you would approach a particular task, like uh, current transaction. So in terms of essence, what, what has kind of happened here for us over the last few years? You know, from a Microsoft perspective and Dynamics 365, as we've been investing through the various product names and, and what we've kind of standardized on now, you know, we started this as a strategy thinking out there in the mobile first, cloud first world and that's how we were leading how we were thinking but the world's continued to evolve and grow hasn't it and we've kind of seen a lot of shift and change around that and and really realistically that doesn't really cover it anymore it really has to kind of think in this sort of sense as to how we bring all the aspects and all the ideas and all the thoughts that I've hoped to try and share with you this morning um, out there from the Dynamics 365 portfolio the intelligent cloud and those little icons are trying to reflect all the engagements that we have from a data perspective that is occurring. You know, we have the, the Microsoft Cloud that all this is being managed and based upon. We have the business applications that we're all interacting with. We have the tools to interact with our customers or our staff through whatever device that might be appropriate. So we have the intelligent cloud taking full advantage of whatever device it may be whatever technology, hopefully we're taking full advantage of the developments that are starting to occur in the, the artificial intelligence side of things. That, I think, pretty much brings me to the full around what is Dynamics 365 and what we're trying to do and how we're bringing everything together, which I hope has made a lot of sense.
fingers crossed, and follow through. So I'm here for the morning. If there's any further questions, happy to help. With the